Hey there, Builder Vlog. Uh, this week we are building the cake robot as picked by you guys. So once again, thank you for all the amazing suggestions. I wish I could build them all. But we are going to build Let Them Eat Cake this week. The uh, birthday cake fork wielding assassin. And uh, I can't wait to show you how it's done. So here we go. It's going to be a piece of cake. Literally, see? I have a little slice of cake here. Uh, I made this model. Oh yeah, you can see it's very highly detailed. So if we look at the sketch, I literally just took something five inches, 25 degrees, you know, as if you cut a cake into 16 pieces. And so there's my little slice of cake. My little slice of heaven. First thing I'm gonna do to turn this into a robot is we are going to shell the inside of it. And so I'm gonna unsuppress this feature and poosh. Uh, after that, let's see what I did next. Unsuppress the next feature. We put a sidewall back. And we unsuppress the next feature. I'm gonna bet another sidewall. And so I've gone ahead and I've made this little box. Now I have hollow space inside my thing to put all the different stuff. So I need to put all the different mounting in. First, I'm gonna mount the drive motors. And so we're gonna unsuppress this feature. Oh, wait, nope, I decided to decorate first. Um, I went ahead and we put some little slits in the front of this. So Diana has somewhere for the paint to go. And I tried to show three tiers of a cake and this will be frosting all the way around. As we go to our next feature, we on suppress it. And we have put the main drive holes through the body. Now, as soon as I did this, I discovered there was a problem. Um, where I wanna place the tire if I actually edit this sketch so you can see what happened. I, I drew a little picture where I wanted the tire here and I placed the hole based off of where I want the tire to sit, making sure that the corner of the frame, and this is what the big important part, make sure the corner of this frame does not go past the tire, really helps in self-writing. So I placed the tire exactly where I want it, but that means the motor didn't have enough space to clear the back wall. So as we on suppress the next feature, I cut space for the gearbox so it would clear inside the frame. Uh, we then go ahead and add a couple chamfers, chamfer, chamfer, chamfer. We're gonna keep chamfering. Yes, it's very important, all the chamfers. All right, so now we can screw our drive motors in. Our next feature is going to be adding the power switch. So as I unsuppress this, we drop a little box right there. We're then going to cut the center of that box out and we're going to go ahead and put a hole in it. So if we rotate this bad boy, we cut a little hole so you can put a screwdriver through to get to the finger tech switch. Once we did that, you fill up the whole thing so it looks nice, boop. And that way with no sharp corners, you don't have to worry about cutting wires we want to suppress the next feature. It is another uh, chamfer. I just added a chamfer to the edge. Once again, no sharp edges. We then cut a hole for the servo. On suppress, Whoosh. hole for the servo arm. This is where uh, the servo arm is gonna come out and that's going to be attached to a plastic spork that we fork things with. All power to the spork. We want to suppress the next feature. Uh, we went ahead, should flip this back around. Uh, we put these three walls in here to help contain the servo. On suppress my next feature, I'm putting two spots for me to put screws into, specifically um, put these things into them. Boop, boop. So I'm going to put um, standoffs in this so I have threaded metal holes to hold the servo down. Next in, just doing a little filleting to make it a little stronger. And then on suppress the next feature, this is going to be the battery charging port. And this gets a lot of little details to it. So as you look in here, I first do the standoff. So this is thick enough. I then cut a hole all the way through. I then go ahead as we on suppress the next feature, add shrinking that down. So there's two sizes. There's the size of the plug and then the female plug that goes inside that add a little filleting to make this whole thing stronger, smoother, and not cut wires. Then we add a chamfer to make it easier to jam the thing in. We're gonna add a chamfer to the other side as well, just to make that easier. 
boom, right there. And then we have to figure out how we're going to get a bottom plate on this. So as I unsuppress the next feature, you can see I've added these four tubes. One there, one here, one over here, one over there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and fillet them to make them stronger. And then we're going to put a hex pattern down it so I can shove um, standoffs to screw this in. And that completes the model. We go ahead and save this. Here she is. Oh, those stuck out a little bit. Oh, well. Um, here she is, ready to go. My little slice of heaven, my little piece of cake. It looks delicious, does it not? Once Diana paints this, it'll be gorgeous. Gorgeous. All right, guys. So uh, now that we have this, we save it as an STL and we jump over to our printer program. We go to the prep page, we select the filament color and we're sending this off to the bamboo. And it is going to print this bad boy. And how long is that gonna take? How long is it gonna take? Tell me, tell me, tell me. All right, two hours and 45 minutes. Two hours, 24 minutes. Get tell Diana to come get it then. All right, Builder Blog, I'm off to work. It's my turn now. Hey, Builder Blog, it's Diana here. I am currently being followed by my little shadow. Say hi, Olin. Hi, Popeyes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you want some cake? All right, so here we are in the shop. There's my little drawer set full of my painting supplies. Um, so what I use is the Tamiya brand paint. I find it to be the easiest to use. You can mix the colors really easily if, you, if they don't have a color that you need. You don't need this. This is for robot building. That's for Zach's end of the spectrum. So the one thing we couldn't design into this print is a natural line for the bottom of the cake. So we've painted the three layers and now we have to paint the bottom, but we have to create the line for where the frosting ends and the cake begins. So I've started it. Let's see how this goes. I think it's looking pretty good so far. And I'm kind of thinking about what color I want the rest of the, the cake to be. Do I want the frosting to stay white? Or do I want to be extra like I am and make it a pretty color? We'll see. All right. All right, we are done with our first pass. We are going to let this dry so that we can handle it again. We're going to do a second coat on the bottom because as you can see it is a much lighter shade than the rest of the cake and um, we're going to concept what the frosting is going to look like the writing is going to look like but in the meantime diana's stomach is starting to growl so time to go get some lunch all right, you guys, it's been a little more than an hour and I just got notice that Zach's on his way home and I got lazy and uh, turned on Project Runway and forgot to come back out and do some more painting. So before Zach gets home, uh, we should get this cake all finished up so that he doesn't know I got lazy. All right, let's go. So what I did settle on, not out of laziness, but out of color aesthetics, is we are not gonna paint the frosting, we're gonna leave the frosting white, but we are going to do some little swoop de swoops and flowers and stuff to try to give it a little more, a little more appeal. So that's the plan, let's get to it. And there we have it let them eat cake so i did some balloons part of happy birthday so that it looks like it's been cut out of a out of a cake i even put a little robot at the bottom since most birthday cakes you try to get a 
decoration theme for the robot theme. We have the three layers of cake, the bottom of the cake. Boom. If only we could eat it. Now that Diana has finished the cake, she really took the cake with this one. <laughs> oh. It's time to press in all the little parts and start soldering things. And this is technically the test print. We are going to redo this thing in TPU. But I want to see how it all works. So there's the finger tech switch. I'm doing kind of a blend of products here. This is a repeat robotics motor and it just goes right in here. He just started selling these little brush motors with a four millimeter output shaft. And I am very interested in seeing how they work. Oh, sorry. I put them in Tidal Wave and they're working very well. I put them in Snapdragon and they're also working well. And I'm just gonna keep adding them to robots. Tidal Wave is now at one year of fighting. My little Pololu motors tend to die after six months. And so after his first motor got to the first pair he, test pair he gave me got to a year, I actually ordered 300 more. Ah, that PLA, not the best. So uh, leave a comment, what's your favorite thing to 3D print robots in? I'm pretty sure everyone's gonna scream TPU in unison, but uh, for little meme robots like this, what's your favorite filament to work with? Tell me. The shame is the tires are gonna come up, cover up some of Diana's art, and Diana did such a good job on the art. Now we're gonna switch to the FingerTech hubs, and I really like the upgrade he did, getting away from the snap hubs. These are still snap hubs, but he got rid of the uh, snap ring and he made this little custom thing that you use the finger tech tool with, which is so much easier. Um, you need a 5 64ths wrench for the set screws. And these are four millimeter. Finger tech sells their hubs and uh, <laughs> to work with anybody's products. But there's one hub. Here comes hub number two. And, uh, God, I have gotten addicted to these Malenki boards. I've installed them in so many robots. They're so fast. So fast and easy to install. And I have so many robots to make. But we're gonna go ahead, stick our finger tech wheel. This is my favorite size of finger tech wheel. It is the one and three quarters. I'm actually not even going to bother putting the ring on these. Yeah, uh -oh. I might have just cracked the PLA. I need you to hold together for just a little bit longer. Oh. <laughs> All right, so we got our drive motors in. Now it's time to wire this thing. All right, Builder Blog, I've got everything jammed in there. If you want to see me actually fully wire a Malenki, I just did that in the Malenki review video. Um, so go check that out because this wiring is literally no different than what I did to Scoopsy Daisy. Um, we're just using repeat motors instead of the Sanyo motors, but I'm going to hit bind on the radio. We're going to see if this all worked. Bind. Ah, oh, the servo is fried. Dang it. So old me used to save parts, always thinking, don't worry, you can fix that in the future. But new me is like, throw it away. It'll just be broken when you need it to be working. 
And uh, one last thing I do, let's just put a little piece of double stick tape down on this Malenki because we can drive test this thing right now. All right, so it looks like left and right are correct, but channel one, channel two is gonna be reversed. <laughs> the cake is a lie. Actually, it's not a lie. We did build cake. <laughs> wow, if the servo just worked right now, oh, we'd be done. Hey, that's not true. I'd be putting a fork weapon on it. Last thing we need is a fork. All right, Builder Blog. Uh, please like and subscribe. I'll show you the fork in uh, next week's episode while we build Swish because I need to go order a different servo. Hey, Builder Blog. Well, you might be saying that's not Zach's house. My work shipped me out uh, to Reno. I have to go fix machinery. Apparently some automotive thingy isn't working quite right. And I'm gonna go fix it. So I'm sorry I did not completely finish the cake robot this week. I know I'm waiting on the servo to show up and now I'm not at my shop. Um, but we are going to do the Swish robot uh, next week. And so I will show you the very end of the cake robot in that episode. But I hope everybody enjoyed this build. I do want to thank the Builder Blog comment section for helping design this robot. I absolutely adore the cake robot. I don't know how I've run a party company for uh, 10 years and not built a cake robot. Um, I should make a pizza robot now. No, I don't want it to be exactly like Ripperoni. What kind of pizza should I make? Anyway, guys. Uh, please like and subscribe, and I will catch you next week. Bye.